with gesturement, a so-called gesture instrument, contemporary composer Jesper Udin has found a way to both expand the possibilities and lowering the threshold to music interaction. By allowing for different types of gesture input, users can play directly on the DNA of music. And this allows new groups to access their own voice and favorite music in a completely new way. So please welcome Jesper Nudin. Thanks a lot. Uh, I think I will start by actually saying something about uh, where I come from. I just saw that the battery was really low on this one, so I'll turn it off. Uh, I'm a classical composer, yes, uh, but I started in rock music. I started playing punk rock when I was 16, 17. Actually quite inspired by Metallica. Uh, two of the guys in, in the band that, I, uh, that we had then started a band called Entombed that became a, a Swedish metal band that was really, really famous for a long time. Uh, so that's a little bit of the, of the background where I come from. But uh, after that I started writing songs and they grew and got bigger and bigger. And I started studying composition after a while. I, I needed tools, so I needed to learn how to read and write music. And I loved to work with the score but the problem for me is that the score is a visual element. I love working with the score, with the details, with all the things, writing for orchestra. But I need to make my basic musical decisions with my ears. Uh, so, uh, 10, 11 years ago, I took a full summer just sitting down programming, trying to find a way of being able to find myself an instrument where I could play on a full music, on all of the parameters, all of the instruments in the music at the same time. Uh, to be able to define rules and to play within them and to change the rules while I was playing. Uh, I think I'll start by just demonstrating a little bit what, what you can do with this and then I'll go in more in depth in, into the technology as such. Thanks a lot. Uh, what I did now was connect a, a motion sensor, connect camera to the app, uh, and then playing on what I call musical DNA. And this is not uh, uh, recorded loops or stems or uh, sound files. It's MIDI, it's the, the, the basic material of music, it's rhythms and, and uh, ranges and pitch, uh, pitch material and, and rhythmic patterns and so on. And everything is moldable in real time and changeable uh, as you play. Uh, I have a short uh, presentation where I can show a little bit more of what it is. Uh, we call it gesturement, which then is a gesture instrument. It's a completely genre agnostic tool. You can really, since it's rules, you can play on any type of music that you can imagine, and hopefully some that you haven't imagined. Personally, when I use it to compose, I use it to trick myself into things that I didn't know that I liked. Because if I write something that I know that I like, I copy myself or someone else. But if I find something that I didn't know that I liked, that's what I'm really aiming for all the time, which is really exciting and, and interesting for me. Uh, 
but I also think it, it, it opens up new ways for me to compose, but it also opens up new ways to interact with music, uh, both for, for professionals and for amateurs, for children, for people who doesn't play an instrument, for people who play an instrument in, in many different ways. Uh, if I try to explain how it works in short, short sentences, uh, I would call it something that, that tries to find the, the, the place in between an instrument and a composition. Because you can define the rules closely enough so you can recognize a type of music or a song, but you can still play within it. So it's really in the middle of being an instrument and a composition. Uh, and as I said, it's Talk, it, it's really about the rules of the music. We, you go into patterns, you go into scales, you go into different types, everything that is the music theory, but, but uh, from a different approach. Music theory as an architecture, as something that, is, that you, can, you can work with and, and, and play with. We call this the DNA of music, just for lack of a better word. Uh, and since it's a software, you can really play any, any, you can control any parameter by any, any type of data. Uh, so, I'll do some examples, uh, if I still have battery on this one. Yes, I do. Let's take a song that everyone knows, Beethoven's Fidelis. Take that musical parameter, the musical DNA of that, and play on it. Make a new Fidelis. show while I do it. music where you can go around within the musical DNA, go back and forth between, within, the, within the piece itself and make your own music but with, with the reference of something that you already know that you love. This is one song, one, one, uh, one melody, but you can also take a style. Uh, let's play some jazz. This is a very simple synthesizer inside of this one, so, so uh, the sounds are not uh, top quality, but the music is there. And how about uh, bringing Fidelis into this one? I can also show, just to have some, some uh, different uh, ideas of what you can do, one final example of, of a style or a, a type of music. I did a collaboration with the Swedish metal, metal band Meshuga a few years ago, uh, where I wrote an orchestral piece based on one of their songs, Bleed. Uh, and after the, the premiere of that piece, we did a jam session uh, in the concert house in, in Stockholm. Uh, two of the musicians from Meshuga, me on laptop and an organ player, uh, to, to have a different approach on the same type of material. And we also did a, a preset in Gesturement where you can play on, on Bleed. And this is a super, super complex song. And they've rehearsed so, so long, and you can just like, go up and down there. But that's not the fun part. The fun part is when you start to take, okay, here's the song that I love, and start to do something else with it. And also start to look at how is it built? How can you go, the music theory, the, the, it really opens new doors to, to, to access music theory for, for new groups of people. That's, at least that's my aim for it. 
I see it as always seen it as, as a really a two track uh, invention and technology that goes both to, to in, in the way I use it for, for professional use, for work with orchestras and, and uh, high level musicians, but also for people who, who hasn't played an instrument. My kids, when they were, were small, they loved sitting and playing on this because it's, it's accessible and easy. Uh, so it's really something that, that goes in, in two directions. And I think this is really important uh, for me because I think that today we have lots of technology that lowers the threshold uh, for, 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 for participating. You can become a photographer with your phone. But still, you want people to strive for excellence. You st we still want people to, to, to aim higher. So I think it's, it's really important that you just don't th do things that are simpler and easy to do, but that also has a depth. That you, where you can, can continue and that you can find doors to, to new ways of, of expressing and, and, uh, and learning more. Uh, so we will talk a lot about the, the inclusion aspect uh, together with Share Music, that, that is a fantastic group that we'll talk with later and, and what they've been doing with the instrument and other, other technology. Uh, I'll just uh, sum up here by showing a little more examples of what I do when I use it uh, as a composer. Uh, uh, and how we use it in professional ways. Uh, we are now in the middle of releasing a, a really deep, deep version of this where, where, where you can really access every single parameter. Uh, you can morph ranges and scales in, in, in so many different ways. We call it Gesturant Pro, where, where that is really for, for professionals to go as deep as possible to see how far can we take this, this approach. Because so far I haven't seen anyone being in this area of, of uh, having something that's playable but still controllable in, in, in this way. So this is what we do, and also personally, uh, I am. I've just finished last week. I just finished a large-scale piece for Martin Frost, Swedish clarinetist, uh, conductor Esa Pekasalnen, and the Swedish Radio Symphony Orchestra, co-commissioned by the Orchestra Radio, uh, Radio France, Philharmonic Radio France. Uh, it's a one-hour piece where both the soloist and the conductor will control. Uh, gesturement and other technologies with motion sensors in real time. So they will be able to play on virtual orchestras together with the live symphony orchestra that they have uh, on stage. This allows for me as a composer to be able to, to use this technology and use this tool to expand the possibilities of what you can actually do w w on stage with, with music. I can compose a score that is composed with this tool that I've used in different settings when I improvise and generate material. And then I can use the same settings for the soloist and the conductor so they can play re in real time freely on the same material as the orchestra has and really merge uh, how, how, they, how they interact in, in many different ways. We also have other technology in this piece where Esa Becasal then will be able to grab the sound of the orchestra, throw it around the audience, freeze the sound, loop the sound, do many things like that. Uh, and for, for these kind of, of approaches, when you really want to do something technically very advanced, it's easy to sometimes come up to, to for, for, the, for the experience of the audience, for it to come up to, to a wall of, you see someone doing something and you hear something, but you don't really understand how they interact. So we, we focused very early on that we wanted to have a very clear visual, visualization of what they are doing. So there will be a custom built uh, uh, sculpture over the orchestra where everything that they do in the motion sensors uh, creates real time visual effects uh, in, in, in many different ways. Uh, that will be projected over the orchestra as, as a part of the, of the same, uh, of the same uh, experience. Uh, so that is uh, what I'm working on now, uh, or what I've just finished now, and we will be rehearsing during August and play uh, uh, August 31st. Uh, but as I said, this, this track of inclusion and opening new doors and lowering threshold is a, an extremely important aspect. I just wanted to, to tell uh, as a final anecdote uh, when I did the presentation in Los Angeles of this technology a few years ago, uh, my aunt who lives there since 50 years came there and she has a big back problems and, and she can't really walk straight and she, she goes like this. And she came there and she saw this and she saw me playing on it. Okay, let me try. And she started dancing and she came, became like this. And, and, and my, my cousin said, she hasn't moved like that in 15 years. <laughs> so it's really something we feel. Okay, the power of, of music and the power of how you can, you feel that you, you create something, you are in something, and everything else just 
it just disappears and you really get, get into the moment. moment. So I, I felt from the start that this is really uh, an important aspect that I really want to, to continue working with. So I'm really happy for this collaboration that we have with Chair Music and that we will talk more about now. So thanks a lot. That was my presentation.